Hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw, and I'm having to go at a photo that I took in Norway. In fact, I'll just show you the photo. Here it is. Now, it's really dark. It's kind of contrasty, and normally I would come in and say, well, let me lift the exposure and take a look at it. And in doing so, you can see there's some nice greens and blues. And I'm like, ah, oh, you normally I'd be like, let's just play those up because I love blues, especially. Uh, but greens and blues are nice complements uh, to, uh, you know, to some warmer tones. And, you know, you can maybe find some warmer tones in the rock. And honestly, the first time I ever did any photos from this visit to Norway, I did them uh, just the way I'm talking about right now. But, you know, I go back to zero uh, here on the exposure. I look at the photo and something about it just kind of screams black and white, right? It just says, hey, man make me a monochrome and that's what i'm going to do so this video and on one is going to be me creating kind of a dramatic monochrome out of this basically dark photo but it just it just feels right sometimes it feels right so i'm going to start in the develop tab as i like to do and in fact i'm going to start with ai auto which if you saw that video that I recently did about on one, you'll know I like to use AI Auto, especially on darker photos. It does a good job of kind of bringing up those tones and giving me a good starting point. Now, the truth is, it's not enough. So I'm gonna come in here and do some more. The negative 20 contrast actually works for me, and I rarely say that because I, uh, I almost never go negative contrast because it kind of washes out um, those shadows and makes that well, the contrast goes away, so it looks a little washed out, but that's okay. We're gonna do some things that basically make that okay. Uh, highlights are coming down. Midtones are going up, and they are going up big, my friends, real big. I'm going to 77, which, um, you know, if you play with the midtones, you will know that there's a lot of them, really, in any photo. But look at the visibility across the image, and it doesn't look bad. It doesn't really look washed out to me. So I'm, uh, I'm good with that. I'm good with the shadows. The blacks at negative 10 looks good. Um, haze is not something I normally play with, but here I'm going up to 77 as well. That's kind of weird. I was at 77 on midtones, and I'm going to 77 on haze. And as you can tell, that's kind of washing out the sky. And I will be honest, I normally try to have a really balanced light uh, distribution. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, I try not to blow out the highlights. I try to manage them in such a way that they don't really look blown out. And while these may not be blown out, they're definitely bright. I don't normally do that, but knowing that it's going to be a monochrome, it's okay, right? So um, I'm letting it go, so to speak, in this case. Now, uh, the let's see, the temperature and tint stay the same, and the saturation and vibrance stay the same. So. I'm good with develop. And honestly, there it is before, really, really dark. And after, quite a bit brighter, approaching blown out in the sky. You know, it doesn't look that great, let's be honest. But um, the power of on one is that you have a lot of power in on one. So I'm gonna go over here, add a filter. I'm gonna add black and white and go ahead and get started on that conversion process. And immediately, it looks better, right? Because those washed out tones, those blues and greens that looked kind of washed out like that, you know, lacking contrast. Remember we took away contrast and we lifted the highlight, or excuse me, the mid tone so much, everything gets kind of washed out, but in black and white, it doesn't look as bad. So something to think about, I'm gonna stay in the color response uh, conversion as opposed to channel mixer, but I am gonna take the blue down to negative 100 and hey, guess what just happened? I got some contrast back because there's a lot of blue in those and in, in them their hills right there's a lot of blue there and um, when i reduce the basically the uh, the brightness level of those remember it looked like that but when i pull that down it looks uh it's darker of course which creates more contrast so it all kind of works together the beauty one of the be uh, beauties of this black and white uh, filter is that you have this toning section and toner and film grain and let me be really clear i never use film grain i don't like grain i don't really like noise it's totally get it like if you're a film aficionado and you love that look hey no judgment it's cool it's just not my thing that's the beauty of digital photography we can all do whatever it is our thing is right so that's not my thing but it's there if you want it but what I do like is playing with tones and toning, uh, two different things. Tones here are the, the light levels. Toning is kind of like split toning where you're adjusting kind of some color shade, if you will. Um, what I did here is I actually clicked on auto 
and you can see it made some adjustments, right? It made quite a few, um, but I came back and I was like, well, let me let me see here. This contrast at negative 100, I don't think I wanna do that. I pulled it back to nine. I left the shadows at 75, and I left the blacks at negative 23. So auto, but I added back the contrast, right? So that, uh, that gave me that look, and then in toner, I actually go over here, and in the hue, I go to about a 248, and I'm in the highlights, by the way, so I'm pulling the amount up to a 33. And then in the shadows, I am going to about 230. So both of these are kind of in the blue, if uh, if you're following kind of where this is on the line. And then the shadows amount is going up to 29. Oh, there it was. And I am gonna adjust the balance towards the, uh, the right, and that's going to about a 65 or 66. And what I did there is just kind of slightly create a little bit of a grayish, kind of uh, well, more of a slight silver kind of look. It's just a personal preference, right? Which is uh, uh, something I just like to do on monochromes. But I feel like, you know, we've got a pretty decent looking photo. There it is before, and there it is now. Still need some contrast, still need some pop. I do have a little trick up my sleeve for that. But I'm done with that, and what I wanna do now is get dynamic contrast, one of my favorite tools. And what I wanna do is basically remove dynamic contrast from the uh, sky and the water, something you've seen me do before. So I go to a negative 45 across all three, but I do wanna mask it in with AI Quick Mask, which is an incredibly powerful tool. So drop, I'm gonna drop that negative, which means I'm not gonna have that negative contrast uh, or dynamic contrast, which kind of gives a little bit of, um, it's almost like clarity, right? A little bit of edge contrast kind of stuff that gives it a little bit of punch and a little bit of a crunch, punch and crunch. It sounds like a cereal. Um, but I'm telling it, don't smooth, because remember, I'm using negative dynamic contrast. I'm telling it, don't smooth things out there. And then I'm gonna go to keep, and I'm gonna put the green into the sky. And if you're not familiar with AI Quick Mask, it is uh, one of the, uh, just an amazingly great tool in On One. So I'm coming in and I'm just giving On One some info that basically says, green is a yeah, I want it there. Red is no, I don't want it there. So I hit apply and it calculates the mask for me. You can see it's kind of rendering. And then in a second it comes up and it says, hey man, here's your mask. And there you go. I mean, I didn't do anything else. I literally just painted the stuff that you saw red and painted the stuff that was green. And I said, go, and it figured it out. I mean, the water's basically perfect. The sky is basically perfect. Even got around the humans up there. It just, uh, it's hard to get better than that. So I'm gonna click done because I wanna accept that mask and apply it to the photo. You can see it's refining it and rendering it. It's gonna apply it to the photo and then I'm good to go. Okay, so if I click on view my mask, there it is. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So what I did is being applied where it is white. Now I like that mask, that's a beautiful mask. That's like a work of art kind of mask. I'm gonna copy that because I want to add dynamic contrast positively to the opposite of this. So if you've been here before and if you've used on one, you know what I'm gonna do, which is same filter. And then I'm gonna open the masking menu, which is right here. And I'm gonna paste this mask, but of course I'm gonna invert this mask. So there we go, if I click view, now I've got the opposite white reveals again. So I'm gonna go add dynamic contrast to this, these, uh, these areas that you see here. So let me turn off the mask view and let me close the masking menu. And basically what I'm doing here is, you know, like high 20s, you know, 28, 29. And I'm doing that for both the medium and large. So you can see basically the rocks and the mountains in the distance are getting crunchy. I don't know why I always do my fists like crunchy. Um, and the water and the sky are like blissfully smooth. So it's so easy to just separate different parts of your photo with AI Quick Mask and then just flop around um, in terms of whatever it is you might be applying to those specific areas. Now I didn't mean to open the filter because what I wanna do is go to local and here's where I'm, where I'm gonna add back some contrast. You see me do this all the time. If you've watched my other on one videos and that is basically I'm taking a local adjustment, I'm just gonna invert it so that it applies across the entire photo. So in other words, it's a global adjustment, which to me is a little bit like having another instance of develop because I don't wanna mess with my settings over there. I'm gonna leave them the same and I'm gonna do a local adjustment done globally. And all I'm gonna do is take contrast and I'm gonna bump it up to about a 30. 
Okay, so there is the photo before this local adjustment, global adjustment, really, and there it is now. So you can see I've just added back contrast, which is giving me a richer overall image. And I've got one more thing on my sleeve to give it a little extra punch, and that is back in the effects menu, I'm gonna add a filter, I'm gonna get the LUTs filter, and I'm gonna use one of my own LUTs. If you're not familiar with my LUT pack, it's available on my website. There's a link down below, but the category is Monochrome Mastery. That's my LUT pack. And the one that I'm using is this Monomania 2, which you can see gives a whole lot of contrast to the photo, but it gives too much contrast. So the beauty uh, here is that I can just take the opacity of this particular adjustment down. I love being able to do that on individual tools or filters. So I basically stuck a LUT on there, which was Monochrome already and it had a lot of contrast in it, but I reduced it uh, uh, opacity down to 65, which means it's a little bit less of an intense implementation of that. So there it is before the, my LUT, and there it is after. And that's my whole workflow, my friends. Let me show you where we started with this photo. It looked like that. It was very dark, and you know it had potential. I love that person on the edge, and let me tell you, I, I went and stood kind of close, and the closest I could get to the edge is like, three or four feet, maybe more than a yard even, because that's like a thousand feet up or something. It's a straight shot down into the water. I mean, it's certain death. Uh, I was shaking. I had my tripod. Now I was, uh, it was, uh, I don't get nervous a lot. And I was super nervous, let me tell you. Anyway, that was the before. And that is the final monochrome with lots of little things that I did. The bottom line is, especially with monochromes, I feel like you can push them a little further in order to get the look that you want. And nobody says, oh my God, that's over the top. Simply because monochromes, they can be highly contrasty like this one. They can have blown out parts like this kind of has blown out parts in the sky. And you can still end up with a photo that people like. I don't know if you like it or if any other people like it, but I like it and you know, that's kind of why I edit. I'm editing what I like. Um, I hope that it gives you some ideas in the process. Thanks for watching my friends. If you enjoyed this video, Check out that video on On One. There's a lot of things you can do. Those are some things to think about when you are doing things in On One. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back as soon as I can with more stuff. You guys take care. And until then, adios.